What's the word, y'all? Yesterday, we dropped a video of me predicting my Eastern Conference first round, and today, we're doing the West. Leave a like, subscribe, use the comment section, give your personal opinions, your predictions. I mean, of the eight series, if we come back after it's all done, you say, Kenny, you missed on half of these, I wouldn't be surprised. This playoffs is gearing up to be the most competitive first round I've seen in my lifetime, so I am extremely, extremely excited. I do want to say, because I read the comments of yesterday's video, I try to look at these series as objective as possible. I don't hate your favorite team just because I pick against them today or yesterday. I don't know why that's so difficult for people to, to really think about. The only team I really hate is my own team. And that's not, that had nothing to do with the players. It had to do with the people running the show. The, all the other 29 teams are trying to look as objective as possible. Y'all know I take notes of pretty much every NBA game that I watch. So when you when I watch the games Denver Nuggets versus Lakers in preparation for this video, I go look at the notes that I took a, a few months ago the first time they played against each other and so on and so forth. Whatever. Let's get to the first round. And that first matchup will be Denver versus LA, a Western Conference final rematch of last year happening in the first round. And in that, it was a complete sweep for the Denver Nuggets, but it was a close sweep. Like, and I don't mean that tongue in cheek. Like, I honestly do believe it was a close sweep. And people make fun of Lakers fans for saying that, but really, those games went down to the wire. And time and time again, the Denver Nuggets showed that they were the better clutch team. And that's all you got to do is be, be clutch when it matters. And Denver did that. Um, I think that the Laker, this Lakers team on paper might be extremely similar to the last year, year when they met against each other. But in philosophy, this team is a lot different. The offense is a lot better. The offense for the Lakers is just a lot better. And there, there's a huge monkey on D'Angelo Russell's back. Because last year when they played against each other, let me show you, let me show you these stats. This is him in the Eastern or Western Conference Finals last year. Um, he's, he, he averaged six points per game. In 23 minutes, shooting 30% from the field and 13% from three. And as y'all know now, in the 2023-2024 season, D'Angelo Russell is arguably the third most important player on this team. I mean, this little run that they've went on since uh, February 1st when they were 25 and 25, a lot of that is D'Angelo Russell getting his swagger back. And, and he will tell you anytime you put a microphone in front of him that like he played through that adversity, adversity so he could be the player he is today. They can't afford for him to have a stinky, stinky series because that's how important his shooting is, his career. His creation is for that team. I'm very, very interested in Gabe Vincent. And the playing game, it opened my eyes to Gabe a little bit more because he's he hasn't really played this year, right? He's been out of the lineup. But in that playing game, he brought a lot of scrappy defense. He had some shots. And I think that's something that they're definitely going to need because they lost Jared Vanderbilt. And I know in the series last year, Jared Vanderbilt didn't play a ton. But Jared Van Vanderbilt is one of those point-of-attack defenders that they desperately needed. Gabe Vincent doesn't fill those shoes as a great point-of-attack defender, but he's better than some of the other options. At least he's pesky, unlike some of the other guards they have on the roster. But with that being said... The Denver Nuggets have everything you can imagine to counteract all of the things that the Lakers have grown accustomed to doing. And they also have the best player in the series. And sometimes when you have the best player in the series, especially when the be that best player is the best player in the world, that's all you really need. Them boys are rested, they'll be healthy, and I'm picking Denver Nuggets in five. Before we go on to the next series, I have a huge, huge announcement. My podcast, Numbers on the Board, the one I do with the homies, is going to be on ESPN2 every Tuesday at 2 o'clock Eastern. Yes, little old me that y'all see grew up in my parents' house. To, I now have a TV show on ESPN2. <laughs> but I'm, I'm still ESPN. Um, and it would mean a lot to me if y'all tuned in every Tuesday. Uh, because whether or not we stay for a long time is definitely dependent on ratings. That's one, one thing I'm learning about TV now. Those ratings matter a ton. Um, but obviously, we couldn't do that without you guys. Um, we do the, the ESPN show on Tuesdays, but we also do our podcast on Tuesdays and Saturdays. The link is always in the description if you want to subscribe to the channel. We're close to 100,000. But just a huge announcement, man. I am not only um, am I going to have a TV show on ESPN2, but that morning, Tuesday morning, I'm going to be on first take in person i'm flying out to new york so just huge huge things and again i wouldn't be able to do any of that if it wasn't for y'all i put a lot of work in but if nobody's listening and nobody's watching that work don't mean a damn thing so thank you next series is a 3-6 matchup phoenix suns versus the timberwolves now we've known this one for some time and um I, th I think most people, when you ask them what's the most intriguing Western Conference series, they're going to say Clippers versus Mavs, which I completely understand. This is a uh, third time around. You see Luka Doncic going against Kawhi Leonard and, and Paul George and company. But this Minnesota Suns series is the most interesting series to me in the entire playoffs. 
If you've been around, you know I've been riding with the Minnesota Timberwolves even before this season started. We dropped the video where I said they were under pressure, and I'm said in that video, I, I expect them to be dramatically better, and they were. For the majority of the season, they were holding the number one seed, and they end up number three. And I like their odds against so many different teams. The Suns is one of those teams where I'm like, it couldn't have broke any worse for them. And I'm not strictly basing that on the fact that the Phoenix Suns have won all three matchups in the regular season. Hell, I've been a fan of a team that won all of the matchups against another team in the regular season and playoffs come around and then that other team bust our ass. You know what I'm saying? If you're a Bulls fan, you know I'm talking about those Cavaliers teams or the Miami Heat teams too. We used to get to the regular season, destroy them, and then LeBron said, never mind, I'm here. So I know things like that can happen where I can't base my entire assumption on the series based on the three games game sample size especially when uh, two of them, or I'm sorry, one of them was up without Carl Anthony Towns. But even with that said, the Suns are a matchup nightmare for this team. Against other teams they could have went against, the two man, two big man lineup of Carl Anthony Towns and Rigo Bear wouldn't be that much of a, of a bad factor in this series. But against the Suns? It has the potential to be that because I look at the previous game um, and I, I, I went through my notes again. I look at the previous games and I ask myself, where do you find Carl Anthony Towns on the defensive side of the ball? Who is he guarding? Is it Grayson Allen? The movement shooter? We're going to have our near seven foot guy chasing around Grayson Allen all day? I don't really love that, but that might be the best thing he can do because he can't hang with Devin Booker and Bradley Beal full-time. In the games that they played against each other, Anthony Edwards had the Kevin Durant assignment, and obviously uh, Yusuf Nurkic is getting guarded by Rudy, Go Rudy Gobert. So Carl Anthony Towns has to guard... Grayson Allen and I hate that for him I hate that for him and I will say this and Rudy Gobert is one of my favorite players of all time this is like as big of a series in Rudy Gobert's career as, as possible because he's going to win DPOY this season I already I, I listen to all the podcasts of people that have votes Rudy Gobert is going to win DPOY in a couple weeks right and even with that said I think the average NBA fan looks at Rudy Gobert and they're they they're they aren't really necessarily impressed with what he could do on the defensive side of the ball especially when you look at previous playoff series whether it be the Clippers series where Terrence Mann hit a million three-pointers or some series against James Harden and the Rockets where not that he was unplayable but his life was extremely, extremely difficult. This Suns team poses some of the same threats that the other teams did in previous playoff matchups versus Rudy Gobert. This team is a tough shot making team. And the entirety of the Minnesota Timberwolves, the defensive philosophy is run you off the line, but also don't let you get to the get to the paint. We want you to take all of your shots in the mid-range area. And you know what team is completely comfortable with that being their entire game plan? The Phoenix Suns. They have three of the best pull-up jump shooters in all of basketball just waiting to get the ball. Waiting to get the ball. And the last time they played against each other, Bradley Buell had 36. And you want to know why? Because they did not bring Rudy Gobert up to the point of attack on a lot of the screens. And well, Bradley Beal, very capable of hitting that shot time and time again. Well, Devin Booker, very capable of hitting that shot time and time again. I went back to watch every single one of Devin Booker's possessions. because, in, in one of my notes from a previous game, this is the game, the first game in April. They played against each other like a week and a half ago. My notes are very vague a lot of the times because sometimes I'm flipping through most, most, multiple games at the same time. What I had in my notes is Devin Booker can't be stopped by Minnesota. Now, if you look at the box score of the other two games, Devin Booker has cool games. He didn't have a, a supernova games like he did in this one. But the reason that was in my notes, because I went back to watch every single one of the possessions, is when they decided to run a high screen pick and roll and Rudy Gobert dropped, it was a pull-up jump shot, whether it be a, a mid-range or a three-point shot. And Rudy Gobert finally started to bring up to the point of attack. It was a blow-by <laughs> blow animation like it's 2K. It was blow-by to the basket. Whoa. And that's the player we got to go against and, and beat four different times. And the Suns are not a team that I've been extremely impressed with this season. They just haven't been. But in this matchup, I kind of like it. Because you trust Anthony Edwards on Kevin Durant. Again, that's what they decided to do. They put uh, Jaden McDaniels on uh, on Devin Booker. They had Jaden McDaniels guarding Devin Booker because I guess they believe that Jaden McDaniels' long wingspan can, can deter Devin Booker from doing what he wants to do. And Patrick Beverly said this once before, that guarding Kevin Durant is easier when you're smaller. So Anthony Edwards, whatever, whatever. In that game, uh, 
Kevin Durant was kind of just shooting over Anthony Edwards. If Minnesota wants to win this series, they have to make Phoenix pay when they go small. They, I'll repeat that. They have to make Phoenix pay when they go small. Because Phoenix is a pretty small team, y'all. They got Nurkic, who's a bruiser, bruiser, bruiser. They got Drew Eubanks, who's a bruiser as well. But come on, there's a difference in talent right there, right? You have to make them pay. And in the three matchups on a regular season, they didn't really do that. Also, Anthony Edwards has really struggled against Phoenix this year. I think he's averaging 14 points per game in those three matchups. So again, I went back to rewatch. Like, was the Phoenix Suns doing anything that was too crazy that Anthony Edwards can't control? Like, no. The answer really is no. Anthony Edwards is a tough shot taker, a tough shot maker. And in some of these games, he just missed open looks, right? That's just part of basketball. It just so happened that all of them happened against the Phoenix Suns. But one thing I did notice is when Anthony Edwards got downhill, they helped out of this world. Where by the time he got his foot into the painted area, there were three different Phoenix Suns players right there with him and i don't know if that's because they don't trust the minnesota Timberwolves three-point shooters and they have the the best three-point percentage amongst any team in the playoffs they don't their volume is not very high but they have the best percentage or do they not trust anthony edwards to make the right play to kick out to these guys i don't really know this is going to be an absolute dog fight i cannot wait for it i think ultimately my pick will be suns and seven i don't feel great about it because i think minnesota obviously can get the job done as well how good will Car Anthony Towns look being what game number two, game number three from coming back from his big injury? There's just a lot of different factors about it. And again, Minnesota, I've been riding with you, but I have to be objective right now. The next series we got is the Clippers versus the Dallas Mavericks. This is round three of all of these. And um, Kawhi Leonard might be playing, might not be playing for the beginning of the season or this series. And I again, just like I said in the other, I love this. I love this matchup a lot. Um, this is a, a super vet. I guess both teams have a bunch of veterans, but like, a team and the Clippers that have had their core together other than James Harden for multiple, multiple years. These two teams have seen each other so many different times, but now Luka Doncic has better reinforcements with Kyrie Irving. He's got better reinforcements with P.J. Washington, uh, with with uh, Daniel Gafford, and so on and so forth. I went back. Let me let me show you this. This is the last time they saw each other in the playoffs. Obviously, y'all know it went seven, um, and Luka put up 46 in that L, but he was trying his very damnedest. Um, look at the rotation that the Dallas Mavericks ran. So it was Luka, Tim Hardaway Jr., Chris Porzingis, Dorian Finney-Smith, and then that fifth star that ended up being Boban a few times, Tyrese, uh, I always say Tyrese, uh, Maxi Kleber a few times, and Jalen Brunson. This is a young Jalen Brunson. He, he ended up putting up, uh, in his 16 minutes, eight points per game. Obviously, he's an All-NBA player now. Um, but this team has so many people, a, a young Jalen Brunson at 24, Josh Richardson who couldn't hit a shot, Willie Cauley-Stein getting real minutes, hell, Trey Burke was getting minutes. And if you look at the series right before this where Luka Doncic played against them in the bubble, if you remember, Michael Kidd Gilchrist was getting real minutes, nine minutes per game. I'm gonna count that as real minutes. He was actually in a rotation. He played every single game this series, every single game. This current Mavs team, won't be having those bad players play that many minutes. He has reinforcements now. And the the Clippers come into this series with a Kawhi Leonard who's, who's knee. We don't know if it's going to be, the swelling's going to be down enough for him to even run. And they haven't been playing their best basketball as of recent. Here are James Harden's stats for the last, uh, let's say, month and some change. 14 points per game, 40% from the field, 32% from three. And this one, 13 points per game. Now it's just five games sample size. So I, but but you see what I'm saying? The last month or so, he has not been great. And even in this month, um, he, he had his hits, but he also had his misses too. So again, Kawhi is injured, at least as far as we know. And James is not playing his most inspired basketball. I feel pretty okay about picking the the Dallas Mavericks in this one. What I will say is it will be a chess match, and I, I think I'm pretty comfortable with saying that Tyron Lue is the better coach in this case. One thing they cannot let happen, and they, they cannot let Zubac end up on an island against Luka time and time again, because I've seen that. I saw that in the playoffs. I saw that in the regular season this year, that Zubac got switched on to Luka, and it was each session, each session, each session. It was a lot of that. They cannot let that be the norm. They cannot let the Dallas Mavericks get every single opportunity that they want. They can't have them get every matchup that they want. They have to fight through these screens, and that's one of my main complaints, not necessarily about the Clippers, but the NBA in general. They, they just very okay with conceding on a pick and roll just switch 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 and now your seven foot one center who's not known to be this this lateral quickness guy is guarding the mvp of the league maybe 
So that's not what you want. I know it happens, but you, I want to see them fight a little bit more. Now, if Kawhi Leonard is injured and he's missing game one or missing game two because of that knee, I feel even more confident in taking the Dallas Mavericks. But I think both of these teams ended up on the right side of the bracket um, be because if you, I think a lot of people say that whoever wins this series is probably going to go to the conference finals. I don't, I don't want to cut out OKC that quick. I got to see how they look like against the Pelicans. But I'm going to take the Dallas Mavericks in seven. And then lastly, we got our 1A matchup. Shout out to the Pels because they played a great game against the Kings. I don't know what it is about the Pelicans not be or, or the Kings not being able to compete with the Pelicans six times, I think was the number. They lost to them six times because of the in-season tournament or whatever. That is an absurd number because obviously you don't see a team six times unless you see them in the playoffs. But OKC should be able to take care of business against this Pelicans team. Again, they're one of the deeper teams of basketball, and that was a really great game that I just watched from Brandon Ingram, which makes me feel optimistic about his health but uh they just have the okay she just has the better team at the end of the day they just do I, I think val's ability to hit the offensive glass and be super physical just isn't enough of an advantage for me to feel comfortable taking the pelicans especially since z's not going to be there for the first two weeks which is the series so uh give me okc and Give me OKC in five, I would say. I'll, I'll definitely give the Pelicans one game at least. Well, uh, that's all That's all of the series, man. That's all of the series. I am so very excited and passionate about that. The games are getting tipped off in a few hours. And I am curious to hear what y'all are thinking about them. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.